When it comes to finding fulfillment or happiness in your life, the self-help community is wrong on so many fucking levels. Because you have to understand that the self-help community is, a, is an industry. Industry like, you know, the tobacco industry or the biking, whatever, the bicycle industry, whatever, clothing industry, whatever industry you're in, right? It is an industry. And if you associated yourself with the self-help movement, you have to avoid these traps at all costs. Or else you're gonna spend your life spinning your wheels for years and doing the wrong thing for years and wonder why you're getting nowhere in your life. So listen closely. I think we all have to go in there and just try this to right. How did I come to that realization that self-help was pretty much, you know, it's a scam on so many levels. Well, I came to this realization recently because, you know, I realized for 10 plus years, I've read books on self-help, on psychology, on even business recently. And I've read so many things. I've read so many books and I've watched so many self-help videos throughout the years. And I've got to this, I've came to this realization that you are not better than anyone else just because you're doing self-improvement. Yep. You're not better than anyone else. You're not better than others just because you're doing self-development. And it's funny because at the beginning of my journey, you know, because none of my friends want to be into self-development. None of my friends want to learn the sort of how to be more confident and all that, that I thought I was better than them. I thought that, you know, you're a bunch of idiots. Uh, that's fucking stupid. I shouldn't hang out with them anymore. And I sort of had this superiority complex a subtle superiority complex it wasn't like a huge uh, narcissistic sort of complex, but I had this illusion of being superior. You know, I was younger back then. So, you know, it's fair at the beginning, I believe. And this is just so wrong on so many levels, right? Because, you know, uh, I was playing video games, you know, I started playing video games again, like a few months ago. And I was like, feeling bad about it at the beginning. I'm like, why am I playing these games? Why am I sitting down wasting my time playing a game? You know, I'm that life coach. I'm that sort of that person who develops themselves, meditates every day and all that. Why am I playing a fucking game? And I just realized in that particular moment, well, wait, why can't I play that game and feel happy anyways? Why do I have to self-develop to feel happy? Can't I just be happy just playing a game? Can't I just be happy just watching a show on television or on Netflix? Why do I have to do in order to be happy? Why do I have to progress in order to be happy? Right? And I just, and I encountered this self-acceptance paradox where, you know, self-acceptance and self-improvement, it's like, do you have to accept yourself? Do you have to improve yourself in order to accept yourself? Or can you just accept yourself without improving yourself? And I realized the fucking self-help industry had it all wrong. It's not about constant improvement. It's not about constant, always chasing for that next thing because you are enough as you are right now. And that was the realization that I had. And that made me realize all of the bad things about the personal development industry that we're gonna get into right now. So listen closely. So basically this video is gonna be a rant about everything wrong with the, per the personal development industry, the self-help industry, right? And basically it's a rant about certain practices that certain people in that industry does, and also certain books, certain seminars, certain content, certain things that they preach, the actual teachings themselves, right? The practices and the teachings that we're gonna criticize here. And, you know, you might wonder like, what authority do I have to speak on this behalf, right? Well, the authority that I have is I've been a personal development junkie for 10 plus years. So I've read like basically dozens and hundreds of books on confidence, self-esteem, uh, finding your purpose in life, uh, getting better relationships, all that. I've read a ton of that. How to master yourself, master your emotions, whatever you want about, you know, personal development, uh, how to attract people of the opposite sex, all that. I've read all these books and I've even coached people one-on-one. -on -one. I've coached dozens of clients already, uh, paid and for free. Um, I've also spoken to uh, almost a hundred people over the phone uh, just recently, like free consultations and all that. And I've, to, and I've taught tens of thousands of people online. So the first bad thing about the personal development industry 
is the obsession with positivity. Obsession with positivity, obsession with positive emotions, positive feelings, just positive vibration, right? Now we talk about high vibration versus low vibration. If you're low vibration, then you're a piece of shit. You shouldn't be there. You should be more high vibration and all that. You should hang out with high vibration people, like positive people. And the problem with that is that when you focus so much on the positive, what tends to happen is the negatives go into the shadow fall into your shadow, right? Carl Jung calls it the shadow, right? The things, the sort of repressed parts of yourself, the repressed aspects of yourself that you don't want to look at, right? So let's say, I don't know, you were abused as a kid, I don't know, or your dad was a bit of a bully to you and you grew up sort of with low self-esteem. And you try to shove that down by just, you know, practicing certain affirmations, like telling to yourself in the mirror, like, I am enough. I am the best and all these things. Or, you know, maybe you go to sort of these self-development seminars, they tell you to write down your goals and achieve these goals and fuck what your parents told you, right? And it's, the, the, the intention is good, right? The intention of the self-help community isn't bad. It's good because they want you to improve your life. But at the same time, um, you want to be careful with just ignoring completely what happened in the past and completely ignoring, right? Basically, self-help is positive psychology applied, is applied positive psychology, which is great, right? Uh, But you want to look also at the darker aspects because if you repress that anger uh, by just trying to be positive, then it's just gonna come up in sneaky ways, right? So for example, I've I've had so many people like, for example, uh, people in the self-development industry that they're always trying to be friendly, always trying to be positive. And I can just sense that there's something fake with these people. If you've ever been like hanging out with people in self-help, they have this weird fake aura of positivity around them, right? And I've had the, the chance to live with some of these people or you know, to, to, uh, to meet these people, right, uh, in the past. And the problem is that they, they become passive aggressive, right? For example, if you're so positive that you can't show any sort of anger to other people, you can't be rude, you can't be direct with someone else and or else this is bad or you're low consciousness and this just gets swept under the rug. And then these people, they just come out, like the, the anger just comes out in sort of like weird offhanded, uh, condescending slash uh, passive aggressive ways that I just have never seen before. It's just like so weird because this person has been hiding their anger or their shadow for the longest of time, right? For example, me, how I express my anger is very different. When I express my anger, it's, I don't hold it back. I show my anger. If I'm angry, I'll show visibly that I am angry. And if they ask if I'm angry, I'm going to say, yes, you make me fucking angry. I'm just going to say it. And the point is not to lash out at them it's to tell them how I feel. It's not to repress, so I'm gonna express my anger uh, and I'm gonna do my best not to hurt the other person. And yes, sometimes when you express that anger very forcefully with all the energy that comes with it, of course you might hurt the other person. But of course it's not intentional. So you do your best sort of to to, um, address that anger by just directly expressing it to the other person. And that's how I do. I just say, you know what, what you did right now made me really angry, I didn't like it. So please don't do this again, or else, I don't know, I'm I'm not gonna hang out with you anymore, or you know, if I'm playing a video game, I'm just gonna be, never do this stupid shit again, or I'm just gonna mute you, whether it be online or in person. So that's just how I express it. And in the self-help community, they're not gonna tell you that. And in the self-help community, it's, it's like, it's like we, it's like saying that, you know, depression is bad, sadness is bad, and you should always be happy and all that. And that's not the case. Yes, in the books, they'll tell you self-acceptance, be happy and be okay with your sadness. But how is it really in practice? In practice, how, how it looks like is a fucking Anthony Robbins seminar where everyone is shouting and, you know, screaming in the air like, yes, I can do it, which is, you know, which is fine, by the way, it's totally fine. But um, you also want to be careful not to cover up all your problems by doing that. The second bad thing about the personal development industry is the hustle culture. You know, people who all talk about 
hustling, always taking action, always being productive, always being the person who is working more than the other person next to you, or the person who is working harder than the other person next to you on Instagram, right? <laughs> as stupid as that, or on Facebook, whatever. And this becomes a culture of toxic productivity. Basically where you are not enough unless you take action. You are not enough unless you shoot uh, three videos per week on YouTube. You are not enough unless you're always reaching out to potential clients on Instagram or whatever it is. You are not enough unless you work 18 hours a day or you're a piece of shit, right? If you watch, for example, Dan Pena or you watch, you know, Gary Vee or Grant Cardone, it's it's sort of the implied, uh, it's sort of the implied assumption that you're always going to be working, right? Or Elon Musk, he's always working. Like, it's sort of this implicit um, assumption that, you know, you should always be taking action or else you're not worth anything. You're a piece of shit, right? And that becomes a huge, huge problem because then you can no longer re relax. You can no longer be with yourself and accept yourself. And isn't the whole goal of self-help is to be happy and fulfilled, right? How can you be happy if you're always chasing after the gold, you're always chasing after that prize, right? It's very sort of a materialistically, materialistic, crude, crude materialistic paradigm, like very materialistic, very sort of monetary action-based and it's a complete disregard to the internal aspects of, of you. The internal aspects of happiness like you know it's easy to measure how many likes you have on instagram or how many how much money you're making but how easy is it is it to measure for example fulfillment and happiness right you can't really brag about that so for example on social media you know you can it's easy to brag about your new car but can you brag about yes yeah, so i'm really aligned with my life purpose and i'm really happy right you can't talk about that to like your parents as friends right when your parents or his friends ask you, hey, so what are you doing for a living? Oh, cool. And then you say, oh, I'm very aligned with my purpose and my values and I'm really happy. They can be like, oh, uh, okay, uh, so how much money are you making? <laughs> Whatever. I don't know what they ask, but so it's, that's the problem here is to focus on results, focus on hustling, focus on productivity, which can be very detrimental. Number three bad thing about the self-help industry is the focus on self-improvement above self-acceptance. Yes, okay, there's gonna be, there's a lot of books on self-acceptance as well, okay? Um, but I feel like in practice, it's not the same, right? Sort of the, the idea of self-help is that you're always gonna be improving yourself, right? Which is great. Actually, it's a great thing if you're inspired to do so. But the problem with that is that people will practice self-acceptance as a way to improve, right? So how do they improve themselves is that they practice this self-acceptance thing. Like, right? Is that stupid? So they can look in the mirror and say, I accept myself for who I am. I love myself for who I am. Uh, I'm perfect the way I, I'm okay the way I am. I'm progressing and growing every single day. I'm okay the way I am. And it, it's sort of this fake self-acceptance, right? It's not real self-acceptance. Like, could you accept yourself even though you were not self-accepting of yourself? <laughs> Something to think about, right? Right, so like, could you be happy? Could you be fine with yourself in it, even if you didn't self-improve? Even if you didn't even try to not try to self-improve, <laughs> could you still be happy? Even if you didn't try to self-accept, and if you were unable to self-accept, could you accept the fact that you have a hard time self-accepting yourself? <laughs> a bit of a, a mind twist for you, but something to think about. Something to think about. Really paradoxical, but think about it. The number four thing that's bad with the self-development industry is, this, is the focus on simple dichotomies. Focus on simple dichotomies, what do I mean? It's like, the way self-help views the world is like, either you have positive emotions or you have negative emotions. Either you're happy or you're sad. Either you're fulfilled or you're a miserable piece of shit. Either you're productive or you're lazy. This sort of this lack of ability to distantiate the two as, and seeing that there are many blends of all of these things together, right? So for example, me, right now I'm being productive because I'm shooting videos, but I'm also lazy as well. I have both of these aspects in me. 
And you know, fulfillment comes in degrees. You're not just either fulfilled or you're not fulfilled. It's sort of this inability to see things in sort of a more gradient complex matter. And I feel like most self-help books are very, very simplistic. It's like either you have high self-esteem or you have low self-esteem. Either you have confidence or you struggle with confidence. And it's like, no, there are many gradients in between. And even if you have just a little bit of confidence, you, you lack a lot of confidence socially, even if you have a little bit of confidence, I mean, that's fine. That's fine, you don't need to beat yourself up over it and try to achieve that perfection of confidence that you believe you, you should have, right? So think, think of that. And think you, should, you gotta sort of have to think more critically here and be like, okay, you know what? Sometimes I'm productive, sometimes I'm lazy, but that's fine. How can I be both at the same time and still be happy with myself? Okay, sometimes I'm confident, sometimes I lack confidence. How can I be happy with myself regardless, right? For example, me, I still get a bit of social anxiety sometimes. Sometimes I have to go, I don't know, I have to go to the office downstairs to, uh, of my apartment complex and ask for something from the janitor and you know, I, I don't wanna do it. And I get a bit anxious. Or I gotta talk on the phone to the, I don't know, to book an appointment somewhere and I'm, I just don't wanna call. I'm kind of socially anxious. I get these moments too, but I don't give a shit because I plow through and I still live on my purpose or whatever. So it's just point being, stop seeing things so simplistically, right? Look at things more in gradients. The number five wrong thing about personal development and the self-help industry is the focus on what feels good, the focus on, on feeling good exercises and practices over actual results, right? What do I mean by that? Is for example, you know, people they'll, they'll mistake, for example, visualization, you know, meditation and all that as actual self-improvement uh, instead of actually achieving what they want in their life or actually seeing that change happen in their life. Right. So for example, some people, they, they mistake sort of like the idea of just sitting down, closing your eyes, visualizing um, your success as actual success. Right. Or they'll watch a motivational video and feel pumped for a minute or two and mistake that for actual self-improvement or mistake that for actual progress to, in your life. And there's a difference between what feels good and actual results. And if you can distinguish it or if you confuse the two, then you're in bad territory, right? Now, of course, you know, I'm, <laughs> I talked earlier before that the problem was that uh, we're too focused on self-improvement. Uh, that's, that's not my goal here to say that, you know, we should focus more on self-improvement. My goal here is to say, if you actually want to self-improve, that's fine, that's nothing wrong with that, but you have to look at the right metrics, at the right things that actually uh, determine your success in that area. For example, if you wanna get a better relationship with your, I don't know, your girlfriend, then you actually see change in the relationship instead of do you actually feel good because you watched a video that told you, you know, how to love your partner, I don't know, like these are some stupid motivational video, right? Do you actually see change? Because if you've been watching my videos, for example, for the last few years, and you haven't seen a single change in your life, then you're messing up somewhere, right? So look at that. The sixth bad thing about the self-help industry is the consumer mindset. Yes, we're actually consumers, right? They want you, you know, in any industry, they want you to consume more of it. Buy more of this, buy more of that, buy this seminar, all of that, which is, you know, which is fine. And, and, at a certain extent, you know, when you begin, it's okay to be excited and you know, you see this whole uh, field of how to improve yourself, which is great. Um, but you don't wanna buy, you fall into that trap of buying book after book after book, after seminar, after seminar, after coaching, after coaching, and see no result in your life, right? The amount of content that you consume should always be proportional to the amount of action that you can take. And if you read so many books and contents that you're not able to act upon, then you're consuming way too much. And the seventh bad thing about the self-help industry is that it is very, very limiting. Yes, it's actually limiting, right? The self-development industry sort of sees improvement, self-improvement, and achieving happiness as sort of the 
the pinnacle, right? That's what you should aim towards. But there's way more to life than just improving yourself, right? There's way more to life than just, you know, trying to improve yourself and better yourself in all ways. There's other things you can do beyond that. And, you know, for example, you could travel the world. You're not self-improving when you're traveling the world, right? For example, you could go see new cultures or maybe you could try new adventures or you can uh, maybe learn a language or maybe, I don't know, learn a guitar. You're not, you know, you're not reading a self-help book. You're not doing self-help. Uh, but, you know, you, you're having experiences, you're living life. There, there's so many things beyond self-help. And, you know, it's, it's sort of, um, you know, there's different levels of ego development. And there's a certain level of ego development where you really want to achieve a lot, right? Sort of like uh, you're obsessed with personal development and all that. But at, this, at a certain point, you're going to reach a point where beyond achievement, there's something greater than that, which is just to be connected and present with the world, right? To be part of the world, to be one with the world, to be present with nature, with the universe, whatever you want to call it. It's just to be present, to be here now and be okay with it. And the way I see self-help is like you put it in the spiral dynamics model, a sort of stage orange spiral dynamics. You can look it up, by the way, there's different levels. And there's on top of orange, there's like there's so many more levels beyond that, like green, yellow, turquoise and all that, that I feel like are missing because of how limiting self-help is. So if you want to climb to these other levels, then maybe you got to read other things. Maybe you got to read about um, religion or you read about uh, enlightenment or you read about spiritual teachings or you read about just psychology. You read about history. And like, so what does the self-development community need more of? I think the personal development community needs a lot more sort of self-honesty, right? Self-honesty as in realize why, you know, um, you, you have certain problems in your life and just be fully honest with yourself. If you struggle with a thing, don't try to cover it up with like a, like a self-help, uh, affirmation, whatever visualization thing, just confront that problem in your life. Just confront it, be fine with it and confront your shadows, confront your demons, be honest with that. And if you struggle with loneliness, just accept it. You have to cry every night because you're lonely, accept it. If you have to, you know, accept that you're completely afraid and you can't talk to anyone because you're socially anxious, accept it, right? You got to be fine with it before you can improve. And that, that's the hard part here. But you know what I realized about all this in summary is that, you know, having things put in simple manners, right? You know, like either you're confident or you like self-esteem or, you know, either you're happy or sad. I feel like these simple concepts is, you know, it's fine at the beginning because when you begin in self-help, you don't have really have this sort of complex ability for, for like uh, complex thinking yet because, you know, it's all new to you. You've never heard about what self-esteem is. You don't know how to develop it. You have no clue how to develop it. So yes, it's, it's good to put it in simple terms uh, at the beginning, but I'm just saying to you, don't get stuck on that simple definition. So I have two tips for you, right? To close this video when you doing your personal development is first use your own judgment, right? Whatever you see in self-help, they tell you, you just be confident, just take action, just do this, just do that. I mean, just use your own judgment. If someone, a guru tells you you gotta be productive, how about not being productive? How about being lazy for a day and playing video games? Can you be okay with that? right? Or you play video games after you've done your work, kind of like what I'm trying to do right now. Or you try to find this, your own sort of balance, find your own balance, find your own judgment of what is right or wrong for you. I think that's the best way to apply self-help is not to simply copy what's said in a book, but to apply it to your specific life situation, right? So learn to think critically like this. Tip number two is actually do self-improvement instead of just doing the practices or just reading more content, right? So for example, what is like actual self-improvement, right? Actual self-improvement, let's say you want to improve your dating life. Actual self-improvement is you go out there and you interact with the opposite sex and you actually try to meet uh, a woman. Maybe it's online, maybe it's whatever. Like you actually go out there to improve your life. 
what will be like something bad for example will be you try to, to read more content on the internet on how to become more attractive and all that that's the wrong way to go about it uh, if you do it too much of course a bit is okay but don't do it too much right actual self-improvement would be for example you actually walk outside simple as that you walk outside and you'll be present to the moment and you enjoy your walk and you exercise that's actual self-improvement you're improving your life actually doing it but at the end of the day right the ultimate paradox of all is you know none of it fucking matters and whether you're self-improved or not just remember that you are okay as you are you are enough as you are whether you self-improve or not whether you watch this video to the end or not whether you apply what i say in this video or not or you just go back to playing world of warcraft 24 hours a day you are enough it doesn't fucking matter at the end and that's the huge paradox of it all and that's why we love personal development isn't it because of these paradoxes right if you need help to resolve some of these paradoxes in personal development and if you're stuck in your life or you're feeling confused you can book a free consultation call with me link in the description below and if you like this video about the, everything wrong with the personal development industry you're gonna love this next video here about why you should stop self-improvement so I'll see you there. If you believe that improving yourself and bettering yourself is gonna to lead to happiness, you are dead fucking wrong. Because when you go on that quest for self-improvement, 